Hopefully everybody is enjoying Fed Forum so far. Lots of uh, wonderful sessions, meetings going on. Um, it's a privilege to be here to talk about service operations with everybody. My name is Aaron Zuber. I'm Global Area Vice President responsible for service operations. And uh, we've got a lot of exciting things to cover today. I'm, I'm lucky enough to be joined by RJ um, and Steve. So RJ runs uh, the I, our ITSM business. He's our general manager. And Steve is on the product side for ITOM. So a lot of the presentation that, that you'll see today uh, circulates around the messages that these gentlemen want to share with you um, pertaining to service operations and how that sets a foundation for what we're trying to do with the ServiceNow platform holistically. So not just about ITSM and ITOM but how does this enable you to be mission focused and to accelerate through those different objectives that are very, very important to you and your strategies. So before we go any further, one, one thing I do wanna do is I wanna talk a little bit about Safe Harbor. Uh, some of the things that you'll see and hear today, and we'd love to have conversations, there will be a Q&A um, later on after the session. Um, we'll try to move through the material uh, in short order so that we can get to that. But you're going to hear some forward looking statements and I want to make sure that the expectations are set that this is where the mind share is going, but it's not necessarily a commitment that some of the things that you're going to see are going to be in production anytime soon. So I just want to make sure that we get that out, of, out uh, in the open and, uh, and hopefully you're excited uh, to learn more about uh, what those might be. So um, real quick, just to take a step back, what is service operations? Service operations sounds pretty general. So when, when we say service operations, what do we really mean? So, Service operations, it's, it's a technology-enabled approach, and the goal is to unify IT services and IT operations, which two historically disparate groups, sometimes entire teams built up around these different practices with different technology stacks. We want a more collaborative and intuitive interaction and strategy moving forward to make sure that service operations is the focal point and serves as a foundation. So the goal is uh, technology excellence uh, in the delivery uh, of your services so that you can have always on digital business services. So kind of a mouthful, but what are we really trying to solve for here? So there's, there's a number of different themes, uh, three in particular that we wanted to highlight and some of, their, uh, some of their challenges that are associated with them. One is to optimize productivity and to reduce tech debt. So if you're thinking about how many tools that you have, how many silos those are creating, um, what that does to your ability to automate. So how can we auto automate when we have a string of Perl products that are stretching end to end of the organization? What does that do to our chain of communication? How does that impact the, the speed at which we can deliver services? And that was something that Chris Beattie talked about this morning about being a differentiator in the marketplace is our ability to deliver at speed. So tech availability and satisfaction, do, do your constituents, do they subscribe to the services that you offer because they don't have a choice or is it because they know it's the best place to get what they need and it's enjoyable and it's fast and it gets them what they want so they can focus on the important things that they're in the position to do to begin with. So, um, you know, making sure that this is, uh, it's on point with, uh, with uh, availability and satisfaction. And what does this really do for innovation and business growth? So if we're not focused, um, like Chris was talking about the patent process, if we're not focused on the mundane things and we're not subscribing to that and it's more enjoyable, how does that free us up for more creative and innovative approaches to the things that are, that are meaningful to us? And what you're going to see here is, is uh, in fact, um, you know, two, two different sides of the coin um, and, and RJ and Steve will be talking about these but in the center is, is your customer employee constituents. Um, and traditionally, the way things are set up, it makes it very, very difficult for them to get what they want. Uh, it also makes it difficult for services and operations to communicate and collaborate in a way that delivers the services and those, and those commitments to your customer in the way that they would expect. And there's a lot of talk around consumer grade um, services and, and, and how can we make the things that you work with daily um, within the environment more to that expectation level. So uh, a quick visual here, what we're trying to do with service operations is we're really trying to expand technology, um, the services while you're reducing costs. So I'm, I'm sure that's something that you're all familiar with, you know, doing more with less. Um, it was something that I was familiar with. Uh, I was um, a Marine Corps myself, uh, and it, it, you never got to a point where you're like, hey, we got, we got more 
then we know what to, to do with and we have more resources that we know what to do with. Um, it was always the opposite. You know, so how can you do more with less? And, and then at the same time, you're asked to deliver extraordinary experiences um, and, pro and productivity um, without increasing that overhead. So you have, this, you have this growing tech estate and you're trying to reduce costs and, and increase efficiency, efficiency at the same time, which is, um, can be <coughs> conflicting, to say the least, um, with those different goals. And as a result of that, um, that expectation is also that you're trying to drive faster innovation to stay ahead of the curve, stay relevant, um, stay ahead of the competition, um, or other nation states in this case, perhaps. So with that, what I wanted to do, hopefully that, that sets at least a broad um, understanding and expectation for service operations. So how are these capabilities really knit together? And how can we see acceleration capabilities like Gen AI, AI, come to the equation and start to give you the acceleration that you're expecting. So I'm going to turn it over to RJ to talk a little bit more about how that can uh, work in the environment with uh, service operations. Thanks, Aaron. Um, so let's take a look um, at what's possible when you bring service and operations together. And I'll share sort of this example that we call AI-powered service operations. And uh, through this, you can scale your teams to handle the sheer volume of incidents that get created in a digital first world, right? So on the left side in terms of, you know, for things like that are people generated incidents, you could leverage uh, automation and AI to handle mundane things like password resets. You know, surprisingly, as I talked to uh, customers, a lot of what the uh, service desk agents are handling are password reset, right? And so you can deflect a lot of those mundane requests coming in. Um, you can leverage virtual agents, again, to provide more self-service to your end users. So again, deflect that work from hitting your team and your, your service desk. Now, when work does need to get escalated, um, leverage capabilities around predictive intelligence and task intelligence to route the work intelligently to the right person so it gets done right the first time. Um, for developers, leveraging change automation to be able to create the change tickets through automation rather than having to come in and populate a change form. Right? And then uh, in terms of the work that the, your agents and operators do, leveraging Gen AI to really help them become more productive. Right? So this is by providing them summarization for the incidents that they're working on so they can understand the issues very quickly, uh, helping them generate resolution notes. Um, a lot of times I hear that, hey, our agents simply write done or fixed and not really what the resolution was. So you can leverage Gen AI uh, to really be able to capture what the solution is. And also uh, from a knowledge management perspective, be able to generate meaningful knowledge articles that again help in that uh, self-service. Um, on the operations side, leverage AI and uh, automation to automate all the common tasks, or common operations, and then also to be able to predict uh, outages before they happen and prevent them. And uh, this is by leveraging uh, AI to be able to correlate the events that are coming in, reduce the noise, and then be able to triage, troubleshoot, and uh, determine the root cause more quickly to be able to restore the service and produce your MTTR. Um, and so typically, the way our customers uh, kind of start their journey, and we think about service operations around modernizing, automating, and accelerating the outcomes. And so it starts with a single cloud platform that ServiceNow provides you. Um, with the best-in-class market-leading IT service management processes, like incident change, uh, et cetera, and then also leading capabilities from an operations perspective, discovery, service mapping. And so typically, the first step there to modernize your um, practice is really creating that data foundation, right? Bringing all your cloud on-prem assets into service now, bringing all the application uh, and, and really populating and having your CIs there. And then once you have that data foundation, then building 
the you know, service management processes on top of that, right? So this is your structured workflows um, through which your end users can interact um, with your services. So this is you know, incident, request, catalog, all of that. But it's all based on top of that data foundation that becomes really important to continue to deliver additional outcomes as you mature your, uh, your practice and, and kind of grow your journey. The second is around automation, right? So automation, and this is really leveraging AI and automation to deliver those extraordinary experiences to your end users, uh, improve your service resiliency, as well as increase the productivity. And, and so this is where things like virtual agent to be able to provide better uh, end user experience, um, leveraging task intelligence, which just became available in, in the IL-5 uh, environments. So um, with the Washington release, uh, you know, we continually keep making more, more of these capabilities available in your um, IL-4, IL-5 uh, environments. And so, um, and then leveraging the uh, capabilities around automation to be able to then correlate the alerts that are coming in, prevent the outages. Um, we also have capabilities around process mining and uh, workforce optimization. So process mining is all around finding out it maybe in your incident process or your change process. You, know, you may have sort of the as designed uh, workflow, but really you know, your end users are doing something else, right? Or your agents may be doing something else. And so process mining gives you that x-ray vision into what's actually happening with your incident process or your change process and then what are the opportunities to uh, remove the bottlenecks. And similarly with your, your people, workforce optimization makes, enables you to have training so that your agents have the right skills based on the work that they need to do. Right? And then finally on the accelerate piece, this is where you can really uh, kind of turbocharge your journey leveraging Gen AI to make your agents more productive and then also deliver better um, experience to your employees. Um, and also um, start becoming more proactive, right? So in the sense of rather than just responding to end users reporting problems, get ahead by actually understanding what's happening on the end user devices and become more proactive. So I'll kind of walk you through three small, uh, three quick features that give you a sense of what this means from a product perspective and the capabilities we offer. So the first one I'll call out is uh, service operations workspace. We call it uh, SOW. And, and so this is a tailor-made uh, interface designed for your agents and operators, which brings together the things that they work with. So if you think about incidents, changes, alerts, logs, all of those in one experience so that they don't have to swivel chair and switch out you know, and look at different applications and different experiences, but really brings all of the work together in one place for your agents and operators prioritizes that work for them so that they can work on the most important things. And uh, it's context rich. It draws on the information from the CMDB, brings it all together in one place so that they can troubleshoot and get their work done faster. Well, we launched this back in San Diego and we're continually adding more capabilities to this uh, SOW experience. Second, I'll call out is uh, on the virtual agent. So in November, we launched our uh, Gen AI powered virtual agent. Um, and uh, this really takes the end user experience to another level in terms of it's, much, it's conversational, right? And, and if all of you have played around with uh, ChatGPT or Copilot, you, you can basically talk to the virtual agent in natural language It understands the user's intent and then produces answers. So you don't have to click around a lot of different knowledge base articles, but really synthesizes the information for the end user so they find what they're looking for and also exposes your catalog, your knowledge base, all of that. And one of the things that's remarkable about the Gen AI powered virtual agent is unlike the prior technology where, where you had to train the model on utterances, you had to create your topics and all your flows and, and your Virtual agent was only as good as the flows that were created for it, right? Um, which is also, it was a heavy lift to get that outcome. And a lot of times when, when I talk to uh, users, they say, hey, we only have about 10% of our catalog items exposed because it just takes so much effort to build these topics. Now with this new Gen AI powered virtual agent, it's 
very fast because you simply point it to the catalog items that you want to expose. You point it to your knowledge base and it becomes available to your end users. So you don't have to go and create all of those topics and flows, et cetera. So the time to value is we're talking orders of magnitude difference than the prior technology. And then finally, I'll talk about proactive uh, end user experience. So this is a product that we're gonna be launching later this year, uh, digital end user experience, DEX for short. And uh, with this, it helps your uh, IT teams become proactive to serving the end users. Uh, and this has probably happened to everybody in this room, which is you have some problem with your device and you just deal with it because you don't want to have to log a ticket, you don't want to have to talk to somebody in IT, and so you just live with it, right? You're frustrated, but you make do. Well, what we're doing now is um, we, we have our agent plan collector, ACC, running on the end user devices, gathering all of the information in terms of the key metrics, memory, CPU, what installed applications are running, what's being used, and we bring all of that information back into service now, and so, when your end user, if they have a problem and they contact your help desk, your help desk actually can see what's happening and they can um, solve the problem. But even better, if they are frequently occurring issues, so for example, your Office 365 keeps crashing, um, those kinds of information become available to your IT teams where they can proactively push out a remediation, right? Maybe it's the old version that needs to be updated, so they can push that out to all the end user devices. So it really helps IT teams become proactive, and so it's a really good uh, example of kind of service operations um, delivering an outcome. And no presentation here will be complete without talking about Gen AI, so I'll, I'll ha have the one slide I'll talk about. And, and really, we're leveraging Gen AI and service operations to deliver outcomes for your services teams, your agents, your help desk, and level two, level three, and really this is about better search so they can find the answers they need um, helping them create knowledge, as well as making them more productive at summarization, kind of help me write resolution notes, those kinds of use cases. Delivers a better outcome for your employees with better self-service, and then also for your operations teams where it can help them with summarization and, and uh, kind of uh, help them understand the alerts that are coming in. And so for that, I'm gonna hand it off to uh, Steve to tell you more about uh, service operations from an ops perspective. Thank you, RJ, and thanks, Aaron, for that great talk as well. Uh, so hey, everybody, wow, it is great to see so many people here, right? Give yourselves a big round of applause. So, uh, so, so I work in outbound product management, so what does that mean, right? It, I'm, I love meeting with our customers to understand how you are using our products, but I also love being able to tell you how our products can help you drive better value across your organizations. And we heard a lot about the, the human side of it, right? The human-generated incident. Now we're gonna talk a lot about the system-generated incident as well as other IT operations functions. So for, you know, for ServiceNow, we have three areas of IT operations management. Um, as an IT operations leader here, your goal is to keep your services running 24 by seven, right? And it's very hard to do. And we're striving to help you do that with our ITOM solutions. So starting off with visibility, we help you gain complete visibility across your entire estate, on-premise, cloud, your containerized environments, and we help you put business context around that so you understand how those, those resources align back to the business. Second area is our predictive AI ops. This is where we're helping customers predict and prevent issues to help you reduce your mean time to repair, right? And then finally, we have Cloud Accelerate. So how many of you here are, are going through a cloud journey right now? Great. So our, our goal here is to help you put some guardrails around that process. Uh, and I'll talk more about how we do that in just a few minutes. Uh, but from, you know, from taking a look at what you have on premise already to migrate it to the cloud all the way through running day two operations. Now, a, a, you know, a, a ServiceNow conversation cannot happen without talking about the CMDB, right? The CMDB is your data foundation for your organization, but of course it's also the data foundation for ServiceNow. The most effective CMDBs are what we call business aware, so that you understand how all those resources that you've deployed align back to the business. Why would you wanna do that? You have to be able to make data-driven decisions, not a human decision. 
based upon things like, you know, for example, if you have all these different monitoring tools telling you that all these you know, systems are going down, you've got you know, critical severity issues, how do you know what to work on first? Right? So we could help you by identifying how that resource aligns back to your business. Uh, and you'll see a dashboard of all these different things. And you can say, all right, I need to fix my, my ERP system first. Or you know, the service that, you know, that provides. So uh, you know, um, like, you know, like DMV services. Uh, so that's one example. Uh, so another example would be on the change management side. I was once a change manager you know, in a past life. And the first question I would always ask is, how does this change impact the business, right? Most of the time, people could not tell me that answer right there. <laughs> they had to go research it, go find out, come back to me later on. And, and it might take a week right, to, you know, to find that out. So now you're delaying the change. If you list a whole bunch of changes, uh, sorry, uh, CIs inside of a change request, there's a process that happens called refresh impacted services. And if you have your services mapped, you'll see all the services that are impacted. So you know who to notify. You know who that, you know, then needs to approve the change. Uh, and you'll, of course, increase your efficiency there. Uh, and then finally, um, how many here have had an outage because of a certificate expiration? Yeah? <laughs> Quite a few of you. So <laughs> we have a whole inventory part for your certificates. We put them in the CMDB. We generate proactive tasks uh, 60 days prior to your expiration. But the great part is, if you have a business aware CMDB, guess what? You get to know how that pending certificate expiration is going to impact your organization. Um, and we'll talk more about other areas here in just a moment. So for visibility, we talk a lot about your, you know, building a business aware CMDB. We have a new application, it's not new anymore, but it's called Service Mapping Plus. We introduce machine learning capabilities to help you map services, not just add connections to existing services, but help you identify entry points and all the resources that belong inside of that service. Uh, we call it automated service suggestion. So it uses AI and, um, and ML underneath the covers to identify meaningful traffic-based connections. Uh, and you can see there we have a dashboard so you can see your service mapping posture. You see on the right-hand side where that, that mouse pointer is. It's pointing at an unmapped services widget. Every, you know, sorry, unmapped servers. Every server that you deploy provides some value back to your organization. So why shouldn't it be part of a map? So we help you identify servers that may have weak traffic. So perhaps those are not serving your business anymore. Or we have servers that are part of a service candidate. So when you start to map your candidates, you'll see that. Uh, and you could also attach existing uh, services through here, these candidates, to an existing service that, that you have if you've done a lot of work in that already. So, you know, great innovation with Service Mapping Plus. Uh, anybody tried out Service Mapping Plus yet? Highly encourage you to do so. It's, it's really great. Uh, our second area is our predictive AI ops. This is an eye chart, I know, but really I'm gonna walk through it very quickly and explain the value of it. You've got a lot of monitoring tools today. You've got the option to use ServiceNow as a monitoring tool for your servers. You've got uh, metric data, log data. You've got traces and metrics coming from open telemetry. We can correlate all of that together down to the most actionable set of alerts to work on. We correlate it via three areas there, time-based uh, text and tags, and also your topology. We then help you uh, pinpoint or you know, better understand the text that's coming in from, you know, from those alerts with AI, and I'll get to that in just a moment. And pinpoint the root cause so that you can then create automated remediation workflows. So if you have common issues that you see and you're confident that, okay, to fix this particular issue, we know that we always have to restart a service. You can build a workflow, include that inside of you know, AI ops, and it'll, it will automatically fire and you'll have now self-healing applications and servers and things like that. So when it comes to you know, Gen AI, right, this is all the rage these days, we just introduced the ability for ITOM. It's called Now Assist for ITOM. So how many of you here have, have struggled to understand what those cryptic events tell you, right? It's, it's, it's really impossible to understand that you know, as a human. So what we're doing is we are simplifying that using our large language model and trying to tell you exactly what the error is in human terms. And we're also trying to help you understand what to do next. So this just came out. Uh, this came out in March. You know, in the store release. Uh, it's got Gen AI capabilities. You know, ServiceNow 
um, AI Ops has used AI and ML underneath the covers for, gosh, how many years now? Like 10 years? But now we're adding Gen AI on top of that. Uh, and then finally here we have Cloud Services Catalog. Uh, if you're going through a cloud journey right now and you're trying to stand up a lot of cloud resources, um, t you know, typically everybody does that in the silo, right? <laughs> And they don't really take into consideration policies, governance, how much it's going to cost. We help you put guardrails around the process by offering up a catalog. You know, this is very aligned with IT service management here, right? You guys in the room who care about IT service management and, and governance will love this because you're going to be able to offer up standard policies, have approvals, uh, make sure that the uh, tags are actually applied at provisioning, application, owner, project, and so forth. Uh, and then also we'll be able to manage those in a day two. So once you have a cloud stack, you can then manage that stack with day two operations. Uh, and of course, you don't have to use the catalog to actually process the request through here. You, um, you could use our API. And of course, we also discover it upon once it's provisioned. So cloud discovery ties in there as well. So that's just a quick summary of the latest innovations that we have for IT operations management. We are really focusing on trying to help you streamline everything on the IT operations side through AI, ML, and standardization with governance. So, you know, with that said, I'm going to turn it back over to Aaron to, to, uh, to close us out. Thanks, Steve. Um, I'm going to move through this at a, at a pretty good clip because I want to get to uh, some Q&A, and I know there's some questions in the audience. And uh, so, so real quick, um, th these are some of the results. This is not an exhaustive list, but if you want to take a picture, feel free to do so. Um, faster resolutions, increased performance. So when we talked about speed uh, and delivery, uh, one thing that, that w is assumed, but I, I feel the need to call it out, is that when we're talking about speed, we're not talking about the sacrifice of quality, OK? So the, the question is, can you strike the balance generate uh, the, the desired results with the quality at a greater speed, and that's really what we're trying to do. Build resilient, productive, and collaborative teams, so we're seeing at least a third of a, uh, an improvement there. And then we're trying to get ahead of the pace of change, so all very, very significant things. Another good one to, to snapshot if you want, the, the, the results that I would uh, instruct you to, uh, to uh, train your focus on would be the ones that are bookending KeyBank and Zoom. Um, these ones are very, very, and, and they all are, but these ones in particular are very uh, automated focused. So when we're talking about what are we doing in order to um, bring an automation component so that we can achieve objectives faster, these are stories that are very, very significant. I would go so far as to say Gen AI and AI, and AI in, in, in general um, is, is not uh, the attempt to replace uh, a human uh, working on that as much as it is trying to return the humanity to that person so they can, they can make better decisions with better data. And like, uh, like RJ and uh, Steve mentioned, uh, data-driven decisions are the things that we want to zero in on. Um, this, is, this is a now-on-now now story. What, this is see what the, you're seeing here is how internally we're uh, resolving our own efficiencies. So when we talk about Asians versus the, the type of population that they're serving versus the growth, um, it's, you notice that there, is, that, there is a, uh, uh, that there is a split. We're going in two opposite directions, which is what you want to see. Population's growing. Services are staying the same, doing more with less. So more service operations benefits. And the one thing that I want to say about this is, again, this isn't about ITSM only. It's not about ITOM only. In fact, our customers, and, and hopefully there's not too many in the room, if you're struggling to get value back, especially from one product set, you're probably contemplating, hey, is this, is this too expensive? You know, where is the value? So time to value is extremely important. Getting service operations right the first time enables you to accelerate through the different areas of the business, through the different workflows. So very, very critical. And we want to make sure that it's impacting things like security, like end user management, like DevOps, and like your governance risk and compliance, which is very, very uh, uh, important to your overall risk management uh, posture. So I want to leave you with three things, and then we'll get into the Q&A. And Yolanda, can you raise your hand real quick so everybody knows where she is if you have a question? Just a couple things, um, uh, three things in particular to ask yourself. Could you achieve agency or command goals easier? 
uh, if service and operations teams were working together, key, key word together more effectively, how would AI improve this? And then where do you have siloed tools so you can focus in, we can get um, some directives on those. So just a few questions to ask yourself internally, um, and I'm gonna thank you for your time, but um, in the meantime, let's go ahead and move right to Q&A. Good morning, and thanks for all of the information. I think my question is for RJ. You mentioned um, regarding AI could um, look at our current KA, well, can it look at our current KAs before generating a new KA, and what if the KAs are outdated? Right. So uh, the question is, you know, what if the knowledge articles are outdated? Um, and so we are working on um, essentially helping you understand the usage of knowledge articles, because, and, and you know, we've talked to customers where they say, hey, we have 3,000 mm -hmm. knowledge articles, and then they have a practice every year to go and review all the KAs usage and so on and then be able to scrub and, and generally it ends up that about a third of them get, um, get shelved. And so we are looking at how to automate that work because it is fairly tedious to go through and, and, and uh, ascertain that. And so we will come with capabilities that not only help you generate the knowledge articles but also then be able to easily understand the usage and the outcomes they are driving, and then be able to manage and maintain them. So that is something that we are working on providing. Because also I think the goal is to avoid duplicity. So we don't want to duplicate, but we also want to make sure that during an automation that you're modifying what you currently have and lessen the manual, which also leads to additional mistakes. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and also, you know, in terms of knowledge creation, there's sort of two ways to think about it. One is you know, the KCS approach, which is you have your agent, but they resolve an issue. But we're also looking at how do you look at sets of incidents and understand what are the knowledge articles associated to them and then be able to update them. So. Thank you so much for the question. I'm sorry, what was your name? Sheila. Sheila, thank you for the question. Thank we have you. another one over here. Hi, I want to ask that the now assist that you basically is the Gen AI, has it been uh, FedRAM approved? So has it, it has Gen AI been FedRAM approved? Um, we're working on getting it FedRAM approved, and I believe right now it's a June date for the first availability. I think that's in the GCC cloud. We're working towards that. So basically they will be FedRAM certified in a, in a June ta time frame, uh, timeline? So the first availability would be June. I think we could take a follow-up in terms of the exact kind of availability, which environment um, that might be relevant for you. Okay, yeah. thank you. Awesome, thank you for the question. We have uh, maybe another one over here, front row. Thank you. So if we have relationships manually created in our CMDB and we want to turn on the service mapping plus, yep. How can we make sure we are successful? What should we do with the old relationships? Great, that's a great question. So with Service Mapping Plus, uh, so the question is if we already have relationships built out, right, manual services, um, if you can, there's a process you could actually look on our doc site to convert manual services to automated. But then if you have good discovery data that has good TCP data and good process data, our machine learning algorithms will suggest candidates to you you could then attach those candidates to existing services so you can keep everything that you had in place and keep you know, the, the, the full life cycle of those services. You're just at enriching those services with, with actual data that we found. Thank you. We have time for one more. Yeah, and, and I just wanna say, we'll, we'll be hanging out out here. We have about 40 seconds. So why don't we go ahead and why don't we close it up. If there's questions, feel free to come up. Okay. Thank you everyone for your time. Hopefully this was useful to you. I got you thinking a little bit about service operations. I'll see you around. Have a great rest of the uh, Fed Forum. <laughs>